Deputy Ruth Coppinger, on behalf of her group. Thank you, Karen Corla. Um, Taoiseach, yesterday, work by the artist Maser was removed from the Project Art Centre building in Dublin. It's the second time this art had to be removed. That it was done under threat of loss of funding from a state body on the grounds that it was political is what's cause for concern. This country has an inglorious record of censorship, both artistic and political. And this parliament should be clear. A piece of art was removed from an arts building in 2018 in a ruling more reminiscent of the Committee of Evil Literature of the 1920s. Now, George Orwell said, the opinion that art should have nothing to do with politics is itself a political attitude. <coughs> is it your belief as well that art shouldn't argue for social change and that charities shouldn't either? The assertion by the CEO of the charities regulator that a repeal the eighth mural with a heart around it is outside of the brief of an art centre is a subjective one by the CEO himself someone who also has a long connection himself with the Catholic Church and of writing Catholic texts. Now, Taoiseach, will you investigate and review this decision and send a message that we've broken with Ireland of the past, including how this mural came under orchestrated attack with all of the complaints being lodged on one day? Or are we back to the old days of De Valera when the arts had to keep to the holiest traditions? How do you feel that the director of the Project Art Centre had, had to physically paint over the work of a respected and innovative artist or face financial ruin? It means the dependency of charities and NGOs on public funds can render them absolutely toothless. The Art Centre doesn't have the funds to mount a legal challenge in the courts. What many people are commenting on is a remarkable double standard whereby the Catholic Church is an active agent in the referendum, yet religious bodies don't have to register with SIPO, for example, like secular groups do. Many religious organisations are also listed in the register of charities published by the regulator, but it seems they're perfectly free to use their buildings to propagate an anti-repeal position. And I see I'm being shouted down by people and censored who don't agree with me when I'm speaking in the Parliament. Now, the irony of this is there's a proliferation of no posters, which are offensive, offensive and upsetting. They demonise women, they make them invisible, but they're also blatantly scientifically inaccurate. Nobody is advocating they be removed although it would be good if the Referendum Commission did actually challenge on a factual basis all claims on all sides. But people are wondering, why is it the most important thing to take down the Maser mural and leave this stuff up there on, channel, on so challenge by the state? So in fun. finishing, every Irish writer of note and artist has been banned in this country. I believe the Maser mural will actually be more popular as a result, and I believe the message young people should Don't take from it is Patrick. to use it in the referendum to win a repeal vote. Tisha to respond. Made by government, and I assume the charities regulator would have taken the same approach or the same attitude had it been uh, had it been a pro-life uh, or an anti-abortion mural. And I've no doubt that the mural will um, appear elsewhere. Perhaps uh, somebody who owns uh, a private building may wish to make uh, the space available for the mural to be reinstated. Uh, and perhaps even the fact that it has been removed um, meant that more people saw it uh, than might have otherwise uh, seen it had that not been the case. Um, but while you, can, while you can paint over a mural, uh, you certainly can't uh, paint over an issue. Uh, and uh, the issue is that nine women every day in Ireland uh, are forced to travel overseas in order to end their pregnancies, and three women in Ireland every day, and the number is only going to rise into the future, are importing pills online uh, and are taking them without medical supervision and guidance, uh, often in their own homes. Uh, and uh, what we're putting to the people now uh, on May 25th is an opportunity to change that, uh, to stop turning a blind eye, to stop turning a cold shoulder, uh, to face up to the reality of abortion in Ireland, which is a reality, uh, and to change our constitution so that we can provide uh, those services that many women need uh, in our own country.
Can I get one minute, Deputy Carpenter? Carla, I hope you'll defend my right to speak in this doll and not be shouted Always down by the a group of, of male member. TDs who can never actually be defend pregnant. The of every member. But Taoiseach, what does it say uh, about this country that women can be accused of being killers? Uh, posters can go up about a license to kill, fetuses that are able to speak. Um, and I think the doll and the Minister for Health should set the record straight. Um, for example, a fetus at nine weeks is 0.9 uh, of an inch, and at 12 weeks is 2.13 of an inch. But anyway, Taoiseach, I think that it says something about the fear of the Irish establishment in this country that it has allowed these laws to really completely narrow political expression and political art in this way. We had a situation in the Dáil where a group of TDs wore a repeal jumper and in jig time a committee ruled out the wearing of any political uh, slogans. And I would just like to know what the Taoiseach and others think is so offensive about this that it should be banned by a state body. Deputy, and would Deputy, you agree with me that Deputy, we should challenge that? Deputy Coppinger. And we should say no. Refrain. There's I've nothing wrong with, with the a past. heart that calls this for is repeal. A act. And there's nothing. This is we should Deputy not Coppinger. allow political censorship. Deputy Coppinger, you've asked me to ensure that I implement the standing orders, and I also ask you and your group to do the same. No, Tisha. No, you can't do that, and you know it's wrong to do that. Tisha. Stupid stunts like that do nothing good for me. Tisha. The, um, Deputy Maddie McGrath. Deputy McGrath. Deputy McGrath. I may have to, I may have to take action. Tisha, one minute. I'm, 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 I'm advised that on, on receipt of complaints that were made to the charities regulators. In relation to the Project Arts Centre uh, property, the, without interruption. the CRA indicated to the trustees of the Arts Centre that the continued display of this mural would, in their opinion, constitute a political advertisement in respect of a matter for which the charity was not set up. And as I said earlier, uh, I assume the charity's regulator would have taken uh, the same approach uh, had it been uh, an anti-abortion uh, or pro-life mural um, relating to the forthcoming uh, referendum. I want to emphasise that the authority is independent in carrying out its functions and in making any decisions in relation to taking enforcement matters uh, with respect to these issues. Uh, but certainly from my, my, my personal point of view, I don't find uh, the mural in any way uh, offensive, but I don't think it's murals or posters that are going to change people's minds or convince people on this issue. Uh, I think what we need is, uh, is proper information, um, independent information, like we're getting now from the Referendum Commission, which has just started its work in the last couple of days. Uh, and also those of us who, who wish to advocate change, uh, going out there, talking to people one-to-one, -one, uh, not berating them, not preaching to them, uh, listening to their concerns and answering their questions. Now, I call